The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate various reading and viewing strategies for comprehension and appreciation. Learners should be able to infer the meaning of unfamiliar words or images in familiar contexts. Hi there, I'm Becky. We see words we don't know the meanings of every day. We see them in newspaper headlines, in magazines, and in our school textbooks. Sometimes when people speak to us, they use unfamiliar words that we don't understand. We can't always have a dictionary with us. And even if we did, we wouldn't stop in the middle of a conversation to look up a word. It would also take up lots of time to look up every new word while reading. So, today we're going to focus on working out the meanings of words without using a dictionary. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to work out the meaning of words without a dictionary, understand the importance of context and comprehension. Let's consider the word context. To do this, we have to look at the word text. A written text can be defined as the following. A passage of words or a passage of writing. You already know what a textbook is. Here are some maths and science textbooks. Now these textbooks are full of texts or passages of writing about a subject. Now let's get to the word context. From the words we already know, text and textbook, we can figure out that context has something to do with a text. In fact, Context refers to what the text is situated in, what is around the text. Here's a definition. Context is the surroundings, the setting. So, that means context is the physical sentence or paragraph that the word appears in, as well as the ideas surrounding a particular word or text. Now, how does context fit into comprehension? We've already said that comprehension depends upon knowing words and what they mean. But it is not just knowing what each individual word means. Comprehension depends also upon how and where the words are used. It depends also upon the context. Let's consider physical context or situation first. In a big shopping center next to an escalator, you might have seen a notice saying, shoes must be worn on escalator. Fair enough. We know it is telling us that everyone who goes on the escalator has to wear shoes. This is because if you have bare feet, your feet might get hurt. So we understand the context or situation of the warning. But now the situation gets a little trickier. What if there's a notice that says the following? Small children must be carried. Does this notice mean that you have to have a small child to be allowed to climb on the escalator? Of course it doesn't. In the context of a shopping center, the sign means if you are shopping with a small child, you have to pick the child up while you're on the escalator. But even if you don't have a child to carry, you can still use the escalator. So we see that the meaning of a sentence depends upon the context in which the sentence appears. In this case, the shopping center. And the meaning of a single word in this case must also depends upon the situation. Everyone must wear shoes, but only people who have children must carry them. In other words, the meaning of the word must is dependent on context. This is important to know for comprehension because when you come across strange words in a passage, you can often make an intelligent guess about the meaning of the word simply by looking at the words around it. So, if meaning depends on the context, let's see how the meaning of a word can change depending on the context. In the sentence, Mpa reads a book a week. A book is a noun, and it is something you read. But depending on the context, book has other meanings. Look at this example. 
If you don't book early, you will never get tickets for the concert. In this case, book does not mean something that you read. Are you able to work out from the context what it means and what part of speech it is? Here's another version of the same word. The player was booked for his foul during the match against Kaiser Chiefs. Can you work out what booked means here and what part of speech it is? As you can see, the word book has various meanings, depending upon the context that it is used in. And this context can help us work out the meaning of the word. Let's go back and look at the context clues to see if you were able to work out the different meanings. Here's our first example. If you don't book early, you will never get tickets for the concert. In this sentence, the words early and you will never get tickets for the concert let you know that book means reserve tickets in advance. We can also work out that in this sentence, book is a verb. It is something that you need to do to get tickets. Our second sentence was, the player was booked for his foul during the match against Kaiser Chiefs. The context here is provided by the words player, foul, match, and your general knowledge that Kaiser Chiefs is a soccer team. These clues help us to work out that booked means his name was written down by the referee because he committed an offense. Again in the sentence was booked is a verb. It was something that happened to the player. From those examples, we could see how words can change their meanings and parts of speech depending upon the context. Book is a word that you're very familiar with. But the same technique of looking at the context of words you are trying to work out the meaning of can be applied to more complicated words that you are unfamiliar with. Another thing to be aware of when working out what words mean is to take note of the source of the text. The source of the article gives you clues as to the tone of the article and what type of writing you're looking at. And this is very helpful to determine the context. Before we try to work out the meanings of unfamiliar words, let's summarize what you should look out for. When trying to work out what a word means, you should consider what words it sounds like, the context or surrounding words and ideas that are associated with it, and the source of the text. Let's put this into practice. Can you work out what the underlined word in this sentence means? It was taken from a decorating magazine. His house was filled with objet d'art from his travels, including a collection of masks. What does objet d'art mean? Well, let's see if we can work it out from looking at our list. First of all, what does it sound like? Objet sounds like objects, which are things. And d'art sounds like a fancy French way of saying art. So I guess the objet d'art means arty things or objects. Let's think about the context. These things are found in his house and include a collection of masks. Well, you find arty things to decorate people's houses and masks would be an example. Now, let's think about the source of the text. We know that this sentence comes from a decorating magazine. So that also ties in with the idea of arty objects. Now let's see if we're right by looking into the dictionary. Aha, there it is. Objet d'art, a French phrase meaning object of art, a small artistic object used for decoration. Well, I'd say our intelligent guesswork was almost spot on. Let's try another example. Can you work out what this word taken from a medical journal means? Ophthalmologists are continually finding new ways of treating cataracts by replacing damaged lenses. Gosh. That's a long word, but I'm sure the steps will still apply. The last part of that word, ologist, sounds like some type of doctor. I know that a dermatologist is a skin doctor and a cardiologist is a heart doctor. So I'm going to guess that an ophthalmologist is some kind of an eye doctor. I'd also guess that it is some type of eye doctor as the first part of ophthalmologist sounds similar to optician. I know that you get your eyes tested at an optician because I wear glasses. If I look at the other words in the sentence, cataracts and lenses, I know that these also have something to do with eyes. So they back up my theory. And this sentence is from a medical journal. So that also supports my claim. Well, let's check if we're right in the dictionary. 
Aha, there it is. An ophthalmologist is a specialist in conditions and diseases related to the eyes. Well, those two examples show us that it isn't always necessary to have a dictionary to work out what a word means. Instead, you can work out what a word means by thinking about what it sounds like, the context of the other words in the sentence or passage, and the source of the text. To put this into action, it is time for today's task. Your task is to work out what the word service means in each of the following sentences. He is a good tennis player and he always wins his service. I always enjoy the sermons at the 10 a.m. service. I got a new dinner service as a wedding present. I must go to the garage because my car needs a service. I would buy the equipment because they give me good after-sales service. Now that you're better equipped to work out the meanings of words from the context that they are situated in, I hope that you will be encouraged to put these skills into practice when you see an unfamiliar word. But from me, till next time, goodbye.